tail of the tape and will tell us a few things, Dave. First up, uh, you'll see that uh, Harrison's a half inch taller, he's a half pound lighter, he's three years younger, and he has a half inch advantage in reach. He's coming off a win, uh, second round TKO over uh, Diobles uh, Hurtado last October. And on the other hand, uh, Mbai is coming off a December uh, knockout, uh, a third round knockout over uh, Adam uh, Zedworthy in a fight that took place in Germany. They're both coming off significant triumphs, and that's uh, an indication of how good this matchup is. I mean, Kipel Spitalo is a big puncher, and Harris is able to take him out early in that fight. Well, it'll be interesting to see just how it unfolds, but the one thing for sure, Mbai is in the United States debut, but he's had all sorts of uh, uh, opportunities to fight overseas. He's fought in Poland, the Czech Republic, he's fought uh, just about every place. I see Jimmy Lennon Jr. is moving in a position, and as soon as I can get his attention, we'll get this thing underway. And uh, uh, Jimmy really can't see me right now, and I'm trying to get in a position where he can see me. So uh, here we go. Take it, Jimmy. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Orleans Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as at this time we present the first of our world championship attractions, and it is all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with the Orleans Hotel and Casino, along with HBO Sports and CM Exchange. This bow coming away is sanctioned by the WBA President Roberto Mendoza, Supervisor Enzo Bagnariol, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Dr. Luther Mack, Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avacino, John Bailey, and Dr. Flip Pomansky, with the Executive Director Mark Ratner. Presenting to our physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. James Game, Dr. William Berliner, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Al Bicic and James Cavan. At this time, we present our judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, we have Dave Moretti. Also from Las Vegas, Patricia Jarman Manning. And from London, England, Paul Thomas. And introducing our third man in the ring, working in this his 21st world title bout, Kenny Bayless. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from La Valois, Paris, France. He weighed in at the limit of 140 pounds even, he is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 27 wins, no losses, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the European and WBA international champion, ranked the number one super lightweight contender in the world by the WBA, introducing Suleiman, the sensation Mbai. And his opponent across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red the corner. Entering the ring, wearing white trunks with black trim, fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, by way of Guyana. His weight, 139 and one half pounds. His record, 22 wins, one loss, one draw, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Here is the WBA Super Lightweight Champion of the World, introducing a vicious Vivian Harris. Once again, it's Kenny Bayless, our referee in charge, now to give instructions. All right, we're listening to Kenny Bayless for the final instructions. Okay here, trunks are okay here. Now, we'll put over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep the tight cleaned at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say you must obey. Good luck, gentlemen. Touch left. Dave, give us a quick look at those rules, will you? Well, 10-point loss system in effect, 10 points at the winner of the round, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell at any round, only the referee can stop the fight, and in the case of an accidental foul, you go to the scorecards after the fourth round. 
All right, so we're set to go. Bob Short and Dave Bon Tempo. You're watching HBO International around the world. We're glad that you're going to be with us. Decked out in the black and silver is uh, Suleiman Mbai, the French fighter, and he's a terrific one with Suli on the front of his trunks there to the left of your screen. In the white trunks now sliding around to the left, of course, is Vivian Harris, the white trunks with the black trim and the black shoes. Harris is a guy that loves to uh, score knockout punches. He loads up shots. Uh, he's all business in the ring. He ordinarily has a crowd-pleasing style, but he's a little bit cautious here. Now he goes to work with the left hand upstairs to uh, Mbai. Mbai uh, venturing across the water for the first time. He's been very successful in Europe, so he shouldn't be nervous, Dave. No, it's just, uh, can he make the adjustment? But he's had the undefeated career and a very good mark coming in. Nice performances, but this is that feeling out process that uh, yeah, you have to get through in order to get out to bigger things. Now, Harris coming off that big knockout early against Diabella Sotaro, so we would expect him to try and see if he can do that again. And that was a major upset because Ricardo is a world class. I mean, he was the champion, just a world class fighter throughout his career. I mean, you take a look at the opponents of these guys, you see guys like uh, uh, Golden Johnson and uh, Michael Clark and Ubaldo Hernandez and uh, uh, Diabellis uh, Hurtado, uh, really world class guys. And when I take a look at the ring record, other than his victory over Khalid Ray Lu, which I don't want to uh, bypass that because Ray Lu is a world champ, that's a tremendous victory for him by, but uh, you really can't compare the records because the European fighters just don't measure up to some of these uh, uh, Latin fighters that uh, Harris has been in there with. It's a slow start to this first round of the fight, uh, feeling out round. It's a situation where they both have a, a similar style. They both want to jab and then fire the right hand behind it in a perfect mechanical order. And because they both want to do the same thing, now they're both waiting too much, trying to make the perfect situation happen. You know, to me, Dave, I don't know if you notice it, but Harris looks a lot bigger, and he's not. He's only a half-inch taller, and he only has a half-inch advantage in reach. It looks like he's got big, big, long, gangly arms, and he looks to be a lot taller than me, but he isn't. No, and that's a factor that will not allow him to just stand outside and box and move if he had that same reach that, that he would look like he would have. Kind of a surprising start here because we expected Harris to come out throwing bombs. That's his uh, track record. But he has seen a video of uh, Mbai, and he may be cautious for a reason that he didn't explain to us. I mean, this guy has a tremendous, powerful right hand, and we haven't seen him really open up with the right hand uh, at all, really, here in the first round. Well, you've got two guys combining for 34 knockouts in about 50 fights, so a little bit of respect being issued here. Sometimes when you've got guys with the big knockout records, you get an overabundance of that respect. But I think that after these guys go back to their corners, you may see something different in round two. Uh, I expect that. Closing seconds now, uh, inside of uh, seven seconds to go in the first round. The crowd doesn't like what they've seen so far, but remember, there's an awful lot on the line here. This is the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the world, so you don't see them just go out there and tee off uh, uh, without a little bit of caution here. We're in the corner now with Vivian Harris. In his corner, he has uh, Lennox uh, Blackmore, Dylan Blip, uh, Parsley, and the great cut man Joe Souza working with him. Be a little more aggressive. Scary. Be a little more aggressive. I'm, I'm hoping, I don't want you playing with the job. If you're chopping, chopping. Yeah. I'm part with the job. I'm right there for the job. Bop, dung enough job. Bop, bop. Right. Set it up. Use your combination. Right. Just stay with it. Okay. Right? Stay with it. I'm part with the job. Chopping, chopping, chopping. All right, so they want uh, Vivian Harris to get a, a lot busier and uh, get a lot more aggressive, and uh, uh, you'll see that. The only uh, loss on his career record, you have to go back to February of 2000 when he lost to uh, Ray Oliveira up in Cranston, Rhode Island. Dave, you did that fight. It was an interesting fight. Oh, the punch is flying all over the place. Ray Oliveira has been one of those uh, punch stat record makers for a number of punches and rounds and uh, just a whirlwind of activity with him. All right, here we go. This is round number two. We're at the Orleans Arena, the brand new Orleans Arena. Uh, it's a beautiful venue for boxing, and it'll be filling up as this night uh, continues because we've got tremendous fights coming up. The Junior Welterweight Championship with Demarcus Crawley and Zab Judah. Zab Judah, a prohibitive betting favorite. And uh, Ray, uh, Ricardo Mayorga in the main event of the evening. And Vernon Forrest, who's the challenger, also a prohibitive favorite. So 
we've got the possibility of upsets. We've got a possibility of all kinds of things happening before this is all over. But right now, it's a Vivian Harris in the white trunks. We expect to see him open up with the right hand a little bit more here in round number two in the scheduled 12 round WBA Super Lightweight Championship. But uh, that is the 140 pound division, by the way, folks, and it's a good one in the world of boxing. Uh, they're starting to open it up a little bit more. In the first round, you're looking at a guy coming over from France. What does he have? You don't recognize any of his opponents. You don't really know what to make of all those knockouts. And Harris fell into that lull in the first round. But here in the second, he started out a little bit more quickly and trying to be more aggressive. Well, he's got the jab uh, kind of in the face of Mbai, but Mbai hasn't been able to land much at all. You know, I talked about this 140-pound division. Costa Zoo is the master of it. John Bay Mitchell is supposed to fight him uh, over in, uh, actually, in uh, Moscow sometime in probably November. And, uh, of course, uh, Zab Judah's in the division. You get guys like uh, uh, Arturo Gotti. Uh, you got Mickey Ward, uh, Octa or Kelly kid from Germany. Ben Taki from Ghana, uh, Hurtado, who we talked about, and then we also got the, uh, Ricky Hatton from England, so uh, you get some pretty good guys. Yeah, as we'll come to pass in uh, later on, I mean, that, that uh, Costa Zoo, master, uh, this is something that uh, Zab Judah will, you know, have to rebound from, just acknowledge that he was in with a very good fighter. Here, again, uh, these guys are going back to what started early. Again, they're trying to pick their shots with the jab and be a little bit too perfect as they both have the same idea. Well, uh, Mbai is supposed to have a terrific left hook, and uh, as they say that, all of a sudden, he gets clipped with a shot, and Kenny Bela is, is calling this a knockdown, and well, he should. A quick puffing right hand <laughs> comes out of nowhere. And uh, while we're just cruising along, he gives him a quick standing hate count. And uh, what a surprise, but that's the power of Harris. Now Harris tries to work on him upside. He surprised him by, and him by is now ignited with a second win. And Harris goes to work on him here in round number two. This is what the crowd came to see. This is what they want to see. A uh, wild, brawling type fight. They don't like these boxing matches here in Las Vegas. They want these guys to open up. Well, it scores a knockdown and a pretty good right hand clip him and dropped him. And that's all that we've been looking for from Harris. And we saw it in round two. So now we've got a highlight. That second fight in a row with a big right hand by Harris in the second. Yeah. And by has his U.S. trainer, Bill Gonzalez. He has Jose uh, Nagofalo who works in there, and Jimmy Duce handles the cuts. Uh, Bernard Ross, his advisor, is also in there. Watch this, Dave. Well, I said that uh, they were trying to set up the perfect shot, and that's why they appear to be a little bit deliberate. But that came to the benefit of Vivian Harris. Right hand getting right through the jab, and then the, the jab gets through. Quick shot, he gets hit, the right hand, jab, and... Hey, that was a surprise, you know. When I saw that live, I thought it was the right hand that dropped him, but it was the right hand that got the brain going one way, and then boom, he tapped him with that left hand, and down he went. So it was actually the left that dropped him, but I still think the right hand power shot is what uh, uh, got the motion of the brain cascading up against the side of the skull, exploding into a situation where he hits the canvas. Oh, well, the cascading factor was certainly there. All right, here we go, round three. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with my good pal and great commentator Dave Von Temple. What a pleasure working together on the World Feed again. Again, Dave, and we've got terrific fights, and this uh, looks like it's going to open up and be pretty exciting before it's all over here, too. As the Frenchman, uh, Suleiman uh, Mbai, tries to do uh, damage to Vivian Harris, but so far it's Harris who had Mbai dumped in the second round with that short, crisp, uh, uh, what we saw was uh, first the right hand and then the crisp left hand that actually did dump Mbai. This is round number three. It's scheduled, of course, the championship distance in 12 rounds, and Kenny Bayless was right on top of that when he did go down. Captains him up with the left hand again. Now, let's see if he can drop that big right. He's trying to sneak off now, Dan. I see what he's doing. Uh, Harris is trying to sneak off the left shoulder to land the big right hand. You watch him. As he jabs, he moves to his right, and he'll try to drop that big right hand, folks. Watch that. He's trying to sneak off the left shoulder, take the vision away with the left jab, and then drop the right hand to try and knock him out. And he just missed with a big shot a moment ago. Came up just a little bit short, but the idea was perfect, and you know he'll go back to it. This is round number three is scheduled for 12. And Mbai so far hasn't been able to do much. And I say that, he bangs a nice stiff jab off the jaw of Vivian Harris. Harris is not affected by that at all. He has his hands held high, getting his jab through and driving off that back leg with a jab. He's throwing it definitively. He goes downstairs, then misses with the hook. 
Uh, very quick on his feet, deceptively quick as Mbai, Dave. And, and yet Harris is doing exactly what Mbai wants to do, which is caused Mbai to move but not quite get into his attack. He wants to operate behind the jab. He wants to set up the pace that way. But Harris is beating him there. And now he doesn't really know where else to go with it. Harris has been the first one with the jab. So who gets into his second game plan? Well, I tell you this, I can see that Harris, uh, there's more to this than meets the eye, folks. I mean, you think they're just out there slugging it out like you wouldn't uh, if you were in the schoolyard, but they're not. Harris is actually trying to see what he can do by getting off that shoulder. That time the uppercut got through, sneaky right hand. I see why Mbai is a world-class fighter. He has a lot of skills, and against a lesser opponent than uh, Vivian Harris, the world champion, uh, you can see that he can handle a lot of lesser opponents. Yeah, he has the good tools to do it, the boxing style and the sense of technique. But Harris has been getting in two or three shots. He's patient and then waits for the next opportunity. He rolls off the shoulder there. There's the big right hand. And again, as he got the jab to set it up. And there's the puffiness underneath that left thigh. He's sneaking up again, folks. Watch him take the little half step to the right and throw the right hand. Bang! There it is right there, but it didn't quite connect. It will connect, though, Dave, because I see that left hand coming down a bit by Mbai, and that's going to be a big problem. He got the right hand throwing himself to Mbai. He's got a sneaky right hand, too, with the bell hands. A pretty good third round, but a round that I give to Aaron. Well, you hear him with a Jamaican accent saying, hey, one, two, and three jabs. Harris can do that. He's got that kind of hand speed. I'm pulling for the body shot. I want the body shot. I'll be right now. Don't reach for them. Come. You got to keep up. Two jabs. Back, back. Right? Hey, we want to say hello, Dave, to the boys of the Bad Boys Gym in Townsville, Australia. Jeff Fennick, Angela Haida, the whole crowd up there, they watch us all the time on the World Feed, so I know they're watching tonight. You and I are heading down to Australia, so I'm going to do some fights, so all right. look forward to that. Good to see all your good friends, huh? That's it. Here we go, round number four, scheduled for 12. This is for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World, 140-pound division. I'm the old Colonel Bob Sheridan here with my cohort Dave Bontempo, one of the best men to break down a fight of anybody in the business. Dave been at it a long time, and I learn a lot every time we do a fight together. Dave, you know how to break these things down. The right hand gets through. Why with the left hand countering is Mbai. Mbai stands right in front of him as Harris tries to sneak off that shoulder, comes back with a nice jumping right hand and it cracks to the high jaw and cheekbone of Mbai. Mbai is not giving any lateral movement inside the side and it's allowing Harris to come straight forward and then slide off to the left shoulder and then crack him with the right hand. There's a stiff jab in the face again. Watch this as Zimbai tries to throw his own left hook and right hand. It's Harris that's beating him to the punch most of the time. Now Harris sneaks around to the right again. This is the position he wants to be. Off that left shoulder. Faints with the left. Now it taps him up with the left hand. Right back to Zimbai, but it falls short as Harris shows how quickly he has moving up. Says, wow, the effort cut that time. Comes Zimbai. Zimbai stands in front of him again as uh, Harris circles around to his left. A big hard shot to the body. Back in front. Zimbai comes back with good hand speed there. And the chess match about moving to the right is going both way, and Mbai is not buying everything that Harris is doing that way. He's trying to do the same thing, shove to the right, drop the right hand right behind him in there, because he's on to what Harris is doing, and likes to try to do the same thing for himself. Really a nice breakdown of guys who are patient and have the same idea. This is uh, getting to be a tough, uh, difficult round to score because as one guy scores, the other guy counters and by has done some nice things in this round and the intelligence and the way Dave explained that to you, you see him by continuing to get through more here. He knows exactly what he's doing. Forham used that time by uh, Harris and Kenny Bayless uh, uh, didn't say anything to him, but he's got his eye right on him. He won't get away with that too many times he's a good enough like Kenny Bayless. Up in his throws is Harris, and again, and by he's making any mistake in standing right in front of him, I think, Dave. Uh, although he's uh, pretty good with that uppercut and the diggy body shot, and as I say that, it's Harris that comes back with a chopping right hand at the time by Harris. Nice cracky right hand high in the cheekbone. Nice hand speed as uh, Harris uh, continues to throw punches and by shows the hand speed. Inside and up underneath the heart of that uppercut. Light right hand sails over the shoulder that time by Mbai. 
interesting thing about him by as you talk about should he be in front of Vivian Harris when a guy's 27 and 0 with 18 knockouts in his mind there are no mistakes that can be made by standing in front of anybody and so sometimes you'll see him be more risky and more gutsy than maybe it looks like he should be on paper because in his mind it's all worked for him thus far in his career but Harris is doing a nice job on the inside well fighting for a world title here now is a different kettle of fish and he knows that he knows the pressure that's on him uh, but the fact that he beat uh, Khalid Ray Lu is uh, uh, just enough for me to be able to say that this kid is a terrific fighter and he's giving a good account of himself against uh, Vivian Harris closing bell of the fourth round wow that was a good round of boxing and that how do you score that one Dave that's a uh, that's a tough round to score that is very difficult they probably be split on the judges cards it, it, it nonetheless was the best round from by. Yeah, he started to do things he wasn't doing earlier. He's quicker off the mark now, and he knows what Harris' best move is. Now, I don't speak French, but there's a sense of urgency in that corner, I think. There is. But there might be some happiness in there, too, but hey, you're coming to life a little bit, too. Notice they're speaking Spanish now to Mbai. He's actually a linguist. He speaks Spanish, French, Italian, and Senegalese. So this guy, and plus he's been working on English for the past month, and uh, uh, he's a, quite an intellectual kid for a prize fighter, I'll tell you. Uh, interesting guy. That's uh, Solomon uh, Mbai, the Frenchman. Uh, in the black trunks as we get ready to go to the fifth round here now. Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontepo. And Harris decides he's not going to let this quick-handed guy take it away from him. And now it's just a nice fight with both guys. Oh, both guys loaded up shots. And neither one quite landed it. They both bounced it off the head of each other here in the fifth round. And Bay has been comfortable on the inside now trying to go to work even though Harris gets off first. And these guys are both in a nice offensive mode. Yeah, both guys trying to load up shots on the inside. Notice the forearm again of Harrison. Kenny hasn't said anything because he, he sort of pushes him away with the with the back of the, the hand and doesn't throw a backhanded punch, which would be illegal. And then Ken would say something to him. So uh, he's not interfering at all because the hands are free when they're inside, which you like to see. This is good inside boxing now. Good uppercut by Harrison. Really doing a nice job. And the interesting thing is, here are guys that both came out with the idea of jabbing in the first part of the fight. They're going to stay outside and jab. It got taken away. Now it's inside warfare. Now, this is just tough war uh, because you see him by do some nice things inside. There he goes with a shoe shine shots to the belly. And Harris now, he really should get some punching room because he got that powerful right hand. He bounces a light right up. See him trying to set him up with a forearm. He got, got away with it that time. But he's slick. He always does it the far side of the referee, Kenny Bayless. There's that shoe shine effect again by Mbai, but he almost walked into a powerful right hand. There's a nice right uppercut that time by Vivian Harris. Harris in the white trunks takes a nice uh, shot to the body by Mbai. Mbai loads up the right hand and cracks the left ear of uh, Vivian Harris. Harris just puts that head on his shoulder and tries to dig to the body of Mbai. Mbai stands flat-footed right in front of him, takes two light right hands and then unleashes a shoe shine effect again. There's a hard body blow that time, Dave. The most significant punches of this round have come from Harris on the inside. He is comfortable fighting there. The uppercut has been a prominent weapon for him and he's got a definitive edge in this round on the inside because he's been able to block some and then lean in and score with some very good combinations here on Mbai who is the one who should change his tactics now. Yeah, I think so too. About 38 seconds ago in the fifth round and Harris taking advantage of the infighting. He kind of goes forward like the bull with the head that time to push him off but the heads haven't clashed. They just sort of uh, toe to toe, uh, forehead on shoulder and let fly. And this is the kind of fight I love. Nice uppercut again inside by Harris. He tries to get some room. Counted right hand that time by Mbai. Mbai misses with a light right hand that whistles past the cheek of Harris. That one does it. Cracks him on the chin with a good right hand does Mbai. Is that going to be enough to give him the round? I don't think so. I think Harris has done more and has landed more clean blows. But Mbai is right in this fight. There's the bell hitting the fifth round. That's a good round of boxing. It really is because both guys scored nicely. And, and by scored well with his right hand at the end. A couple of crisp combinations. 
he has something to hang his head on as far as his optimism. You know what the problem, Dave, and the scoring is, is that Mbai was down by that flash knockdown back in the second round, and that's pretty much the difference. Mbai had a pretty good round in the fourth, but not enough to give him the round. And he had another really good round in the fifth, but I still think that Harris had just a little edge. So with that said, I've got the four points separating the fighters right now after five rounds. Because Mbai is waiting too long. He's waiting to go off of what Harris does. He has to take the lead himself. Well, that's something, you know, when a guy's undefeated, they have that mentality that they can't lose. And you're absolutely right. He should be getting off first, and he's now going to take what they call ring generalship. He's going to take it in command and try and take it away from Harris, because Harris can fight on the inside, as we've seen in his last round, and he can also fight on the outside. He's got a better jab, and he certainly has probably a more powerful right hand, as Hubelis uh, 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 Hurtado found out in the second round of their uh, fight when they did, did battle for him to win the championship. And what a surprise uh, uh, that was. So here we go again. And by a terrific fighter, but Harris having things going his way right now. The looping right hand gets through him by uh, down on his heels, standing right in front of him. And David still amazes me. I mentioned it a couple of rounds ago, but doesn't Harris just look taller and, and, and have a much bigger reach? Big right hand gets through. Followed up by the left hook by Mbai. That caught the attention of Harris. That was a good right hand shot. Yeah, he's on the outside. He looks like it would be a perfect place for him to be. Yet, uh, Harris has thrived when Mbai came to him. And he was able to do a lot of stuff on the inside. He is versatile. And we're talking about Mbai being a counter puncher you know maybe if you land 40 percent of your punches to 50 percent you can win a fight but if you're a counter puncher you may have to land almost 70 percent to win because you have fewer opportunities and that's what Mbai is looking at right now fewer chances when you take a look at the ring record of Mbai he's got slightly more TKOs than he has in pure knockouts uh, and he's got uh, 18 total so uh, he's got about four or five pure knockouts so he possesses the power to knock out Harris Harris definitely has knockout power. He has a lot of TKO stoppages by uh, uh, accumulation of punches, too. But he has several clean knockouts, too, on his uh, career record. So either one of these guys possesses the one hand and one punch power shot to knock a guy flat. But both of them more or less do it with accumulation of punches. And Mbai, I think, is having his best round of the fight. And this is the sixth round of this scheduled 12 round. And, and there, while it's only the sixth round, there is a sense of urgency for Mbai to start winning a couple rounds here. Hey, you've been down already. You've uh, gotten off to a slow start in the fight. You have to pick it up. I mean, even in a 12 round fight where there's room to play, you know, Mbai has probably been played out as far as any room for error that he had. Harris doesn't seem to be as crisp to me right at this particular moment. And, and Mbai looks to me like a guy that, that is sneaking back into the fight and gaining more confidence as these rounds are going by. Uh, no longer the luster of the lights of Las Vegas. And as I say that, a digging body shot. And he cracks him behind the elbow, a la uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, who made a living in those uh, shots behind the elbows of opponents. And those are two. Once with the left hook, then with the right hand by Harris behind the elbows of Mbai. And that's got his elbows down close to his body because he didn't want to take another shot and both of these guys have real cut uh, uh, bodies they're in tremendous physical condition these are consummate professional athletes uh, at this level uh, tremendously in condition for this fight and both have trained in excess of 12 weeks to get ready for this world title fight and they've shown their training ritual because they've had good stamina so far in this fight but it's so far it's still Harris able to do what he wants to do and then buy on the cantering end and we'll see if he shifts that all right, we're coming up to the closing bell of the sixth round, and there it is. And I think in by, I'm going to give him that round, Dave. I don't know. Do you go along with that? Yeah, he, he had a good round. But Harris had a good round last round, though, and then maybe took a little bit uh, to round off round six. And by the way, uh, while I have a couple of rounds scored, even the first and the fourth, which the judges won't have, and giving him by the sixth round, things are tightening up a, a little bit more here. You know, I've got to score 59-56, but it's Patricia Jarman Manning, Dave Moretti, and Paul Thomas that are the official scores. And uh, while I had two rounds even, the fourth and the first, they probably won't have those even. If they went the other way with Mbai, you get a dead even fight. And there's Mbai with the right hand getting in as he had some chances in the last round. All right, this fight is getting more interesting by the round. Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. You're watching HBO International on Belmonte Productions' performance here of the Vivian Harris 
uh, Suleiman Mbai World Super Lightweight Championship fight from Las Vegas, Nevada in the New Orleans Arena. That's not New Orleans, that's the New Orleans Arena. And we're pleased that you can be with us. The principals in the ring, Vivian Harris in the white trunks, 22, 1 and 1, 16 KOs from Brooklyn, New York, and the United States of America. And uh, Suleiman Mbai with a record of 27 and 0, undefeated with 18 KOs, hails from uh, Lavoie in Paris in uh, France. That's just outside of Paris and the suburbs decked out in the black and silver. We're in the seventh round, past the halfway point now in this scheduled 12 round affair. I'm sure to Dave Bon Tempo, and again, we're glad that you can be with us. As Mbai in the black trunk stands right in the seventh ring and lashes out with a straight left jab to the face of Vivian Harris. Harris is wild with his right hand. He doesn't seem to be, Dave, in the closing uh, part of the last round, uh, is crisp with that right hand. You see, he's missing it more. Uh, he comes forward, Kenny Billis says, hey, hey, don't lean on the back of his head. Harris may not have been as crisp, but he is still on the outside, and because Mbai has not come to him so much, He's gotten away with everything. He's gotten a little bit in there. He's kept Mbai from attacking him thus far in the seventh round. And he is controlling the tempo from where he is. Now, if this round would end like this, he would get it on the perception of aggression. Of course, that was a nice right hand there by Mbai, who caught him moving around. Yeah, he caught him dancing a little bit off to his right. And he, uh, it's a good thing he didn't catch him coming back to his left because he might have knocked him out with that shot. And he's got a big knot that's come up underneath his left eye from that really good, crisp right hand. That might be the best punch that Mbai has landed during the course of the fight. And he's landed about three good punches. And he's looking to land that right hand again because he's been able to get it through. But old vicious uh, Harris, uh, Vivian, uh, and you got to be vicious, I guess, if you're a guy and you got a first name like Vivian, like the boy in Hicks, too. Huh? I, I tell you what, and after a, a knockout like that over Hurtado, he can be vicious. That's a fair nickname for him after that fight. And he's on the outside. He's, he's basically almost stealing this round outside unless Mbai can come in there and actually force the pace. Mbai should jump in here and he's starting to do that. Well, I think Mbai has, has turned it up a notch. He's landed the more crisp blows now. He's landed about three of them in this round. And what you say is true that Harris has got the outside and that's where he would want to fight this and land his big right hands. But instead he's being beaten to the punch right now by Mbai who's showing tremendous hand speed. This is a really good and a tactical fight that started out uh, with a lot of tactics to the point where the crowd wasn't pleased at all with the first round. But that all changed in the second round with the knockdown. Uh, it's nothing too fancy, but that's the best round of the fight from uh, in by as far as I'm concerned. And I thought he won the last round as well. Look at this, he's on Harris! Uppercut, he may have him hurt! He's going to run out of time here, and he does as the bill ends with the seventh round. If that puts the explanation point on the seventh round from by And he did hurt him. Absolutely hurt him. Let's see if uh, Vivian can recover here. Come on, come on, relax. Come on, relax. Come on, let me talk. Okay, let me Come on, come on. You want to win this fight? Come on, don't tell him. I got to respect you. Yo, 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 you want to win this fight? Stop living with on the outside is Harris taking a right hand from Mbai who stepped inside and nailed him. Watch the jab of Harris and then here is Mbai later on nailing him toward the end of the round. It is best punch of the fight. Two excellent highlights here for Mbai. He hurt Harris at the end of the round. Perfect right hand and some unsteady legs for Harris but fortunately for him the clock was his friend. All right, we're coming up to the eighth round, and can Vivian Harris recover from that heavy right-hand punch that he took? And this is a big mistake by the corner of Mbai to have anything wrong in that corner that gave him an extra... Uh, that, that's just not a professional corner. When your fighter has a rhythm going, you want him right back out there. And that four or five seconds is just rest that just could give enough recovery time to Harris to change this fight around. That's a very, very bad thing to happen. And not a good corner to allow all that to happen in a world title fight. At the absolute wrong time from his perspective because Mbai has momentum from the end of last round riding into here. And it will be interesting to see if he's able to get on the inside again in this round as he did in the last 40 seconds of the last. You notice, David, now that Mbai is bouncing left and bouncing right. He's up on his toes. He's got standing dead in front of this guy and he's a better fighter for it, I believe. We'll see because one big right hand from Vivian Harris can change this thing in a, in a minute. But uh, look at who's landing the shots. Mbai right in there. He wants to fight it on the inside if he can. And he's got him sucked back into the type of fight that he wants. 
He'd love to fight this thing in here and then step back and land a shot when he can. He landed the left hook backing off that time. Sets him up with the shoulder. Exchanges punches on the inside. Does Harris with him by. And by looking to land a right hand again as he tries to get behind that elbow. There's an elbow in the face. And by comes with the uppercut but doesn't land. Now he spins out, circles around to his right. Vivian Harris hangs on that time and Kenny Bayless separates the two fighters. This is round eight. It's good action because these guys are really the chess players in here right now. As Harris comes forward and Bai gets his hands off. Good quick hand speed. He tries to slide around behind him and throw that right hand. But Harris knows exactly how to hold him off by getting his left hand out. But Bai is trying more things a sense that he believes he is on a run in this fight. He tried to spin away, move to the right, hunt off of that and find some new angles for himself. Meanwhile, Harris needs a fresh burst of adrenaline. He had that great start, and even a couple of rounds ago, he was on the outside, controlling things, and then Ibai came in and was able to lock him. Well, I noticed it started to turn a little bit in the fifth round, and then I thought, for sure, that Ibai won six, and then I thought, uh, seven, and uh, you hit Kenny Bennett say, okay, let's go, your hands free, keep going, guys. Why with the right hand again, and that's the punch that Harris is missing that he doesn't miss when he takes out lesser opponents, but to me, and by you showing to me, no matter what happens in this fight now, David, this guy's a world-class fighter. Oh, yeah, he came over here, and he's uh, performed at a nice level, and he is in his best mode of the fight. You see, he's beating him inside, and still Harris, oh, he landed the right hand that time, but it didn't seem to take the effect on him by. By uh, is he's got that uh, frame of mind as he ducks underneath all the artillery thrown by Harris. He ducks underneath it. This guy has a, a champion's attitude and an undefeated fight as well. You see that he doesn't believe he can lose, and you pointed that out a couple rounds ago. And he's coming on and waiting, and then firing shots and coming on the inside. And this is going to be exciting to see how it plays out down the stretch now to that two different scenarios in this fight well the ring general in this round uh, was definitely in by and it'll be interesting to see if the officials see the same way we do it i'm giving that round again to him by i thought he was more uh certainly more in charge and i thought he landed clean in shots although uh harris did land a series of clean shots himself but i think if i had a little edge in that round i get this thing down near dead even now I want you to put the punches together. Keep them up here. Be careful. I want you to put the punches together. Your jab, your jab, right hand. I'm digging. I'm going to everybody. You're taking too long to come up with the punches. I want you to put the punches together. Jab, send them up here. Jab, jab, jab. Right hand. I'm digging. I got to put it together. Don't. And Bay's been on a roll on the inside. Harris has been doing his better work on the outside. A couple shots in there by and by. Then Harris shoots a body shot in. And this is good, gritty, inside work by these guys. And nice spinning move by and by to land a two-punch combination. Then Harris back with the left hook of his own. Boy, I tell you, uh, that kind of puts an explanation point on what I was saying. I, I thought Mbai had to, another good round. That's three rounds in a row I've given Mbai, and I got him right back in this fight. I'll give this thing 77-76, and don't forget Mbai was down in the second round. That's the difference from the fight right now, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the judges may see it a little bit different, but uh, I tell you, Harris, as far as I'm concerned, has got to turn it around in this round because he's letting him by. He's let him back into the fight, and as I say that, he cracked him with a pretty good right hand and spun the head at the time of uh, uh, Solomay and by. And he started it out with two jabs and followed behind it with the right hand. And for Vivian Harris, the outside would be a nice place now to pile up points. You're down the stretch of the fight, you want to put points in the bank here. And on the inside, he's been out slot. And in case you're wondering about these guys, Vivian Harris has been 10 rounds four times in his career, and he's been 12 rounds three times. So this is no strange territory in the ninth round. The other guy has been 10 rounds three times in his career, and 12 rounds once. And then that 12 round fight that he had was his win over Khalid Relu, the former champion of the world uh, in uh, Paris, France. So both of these guys can go the distance, and you can just tell by their buddies. They're nowhere near running out of gas, and there's been a what I would call not serious, but certainly a best pace for this fight. And when a guy's been 12 rounds many times as they exchange again, you might see three different scenarios with the stamina. First, he comes out firing, and then in the uh, middle rounds, he cruises a little bit, and comes on strong late. And this is now the time to come on late, rounds 9 through 12. We're at the midway point in the ninth round, and this round is fairly even, though I still think that Mbai has landed clean of blows here in, in the ninth round, which is kind of surprising. Harris trying to do something, but he doesn't have that pinpoint control that he had earlier in the uh, in the fight. And look at this, Mbai, he's one of these guys, David, that you don't want to fight, because there's no quitting this guy. He, he doesn't know how to lose. 
you had him on the deck, and what did he do? He came right back off the deck angry and tried to make a better fight out of it. But Vivian Harris has also abandoned what would have been a common sense approach for him here. He should be outside more. He should be jabbing and moving on the angles more. Now, earlier, this was working for him on the inside, but since it's not now, he should abandon that. You notice know, another thing, David, Vivian is a little bit sloppy right now, and the other kid is very crisp and short with his punch. You see that cracking left up there? Watch how crisp, folks, as, uh, as, as you watch this with us. Watch just how crisp the punching power is, how short, how direct. You see that? And then Vivian again looks wild and loopy with his right hand. Watch how crisp the other guy is. And by watch his shots down when they unfold here. 22 seconds to go on the ninth round. And I think if I is, is going to steal this round, in my opinion, again, you see the wide, long punches. A nice stiff jab. It catches a bit of the cheek. Bangs him up behind the head, does it. And by closes it second down. And now he needs to put on one of those uh, Muhammad Ali uh, stealing the round finishes. And neither guy is willing to do that. And then is going to get that round of my scorecard, too. I get this fight dead even at the nine for the world championship. David, it's not so much that I have it even but as I have it in by. If the judges are seeing it the same way we are, I have him by coming on from the fifth round on. I have only six, seven, eight, and nine. It's of the utmost importance to Harris if that uh, knockdown back in the second round is going to mean anything, that he turns this around now. He cannot give up this fifth round. Now, folks, mind you, and I'm sure Dave, you'd go along with me on this, five, six, seven, uh, especially six, seven, eight, nine were very close rounds that we just think technically uh, imbi outbox the guy and land him on clean both. And objectively, then you'd have to say that they might, some of them might be split rounds as far as how the judges are seeing them if they're close. So, uh, we've got ourselves a quite a debatable topic here as we go into rounds. Yeah, we should do. We go to the 10th round. Remember, this is a 12-round fight. Bob Sheridan, Dave Bontempo. We're at the Orleans Hotel and Casino in the beautiful new arena here at the Orleans Hotel. What a job the Gone family has done in building up this town in Las Vegas. They just uh, uh, got this arena going great here, and uh, uh, people are uh, just absolutely going to love it. It's a perfect size for the type of fights we have tonight. I guess it seats around all oh, 10 or 12,000 for boxing, which is perfect. Uh, a little bit smaller than the Thomas and Mack Center across town, which approaches about uh, 20,000 people, which is good for heavyweight title fight. But this is a nice, cozy crowd and a clean view to the ring for every single person here. It's terrific. The principal's in there, Vivian Harris in the white trunks, a little cat and mouse. It's not time for him to wait anymore, Dave. No, he has to be on the outside and work. It's one thing to be on the outside and wait if your opponent's not firing punches. There's a good right hand by Harris, but and by answered him. Yeah, he comes right back and counters it. Now, what wasn't happening in the first uh, five rounds of the fight was that Mbai wasn't answering uh, Harris, but uh, he's got definitely a second win and appears to be stronger to me right now, although throughout the course of the fight, I've said it on two or three different occasions that Harris looks bigger, he looks stronger at times, but boy, I tell you, Mbai is a terrific boxer, and this has been a chess match sort of fight with guys with very similar styles. Before Mbai was waiting, and waiting too long, but now even when he's waiting to fire his counter shot, he's anxious. He doesn't wait as long, he fires more often, and he's trying to time off of Harris, and that also helps him that Harris is tired. Well, he's, he's the busier of the two fighters, uh, definitely is in by, and I think that that, uh, what I call hustle and ring generalship, in, in these very close last uh, four rounds, uh, the difference uh, in, in perhaps the way the judges, if they agree with us, are seeing this fight. There's Harris from the outside loading up the right hand, but it just whistles past the nose that time, a stiff jab in the face of him by. And Bai comes back with an uppercut inside. Harris tries to do something to land the big powerful right. He's got away from sliding off the shoulder and trying to line up his right hand. He's trying to load up the shot there. And the other kid seems quicker. He's very quick on his feet. He's quick with his hands. He's counterpunched excellently. He's doing that old shoe shine to the midsection right now that doesn't do much, but it can steal the attention and get a guy up balance. Nice uppercut inside. Cracked the jaw that time of Vivian Harris. He may have hurt him a little bit. See him a little staggery there, David. The knees buckled by Harris as Mbai got him on the inside and even though he walks into one as the heads come together here Mbai has been consistently busy 
on the inside. That's been a pretty good office for him in this fight. Yeah, I agree with you, Deb. I just think he's outboxing him nicely now. And uh, that sense of urgency, uh, evidently, they don't have in the corner of Harris because uh, they've let this round slide away. Harris said uh, loads up the right hand, but it misses twice. And in by, I mean, that's great defense. And at the bell, they both throw shots. That's a nice round of boxing. But I think in by won that round again. And I'll tell you, if the judges see it the way I've got it, and buys ahead in the fight after being knocked down in the second round. Watch your head inside, son. Yo, there's your uh, one fast to work. This is uh, 11 coming up. Uh, you got the beat to you, baby. Uh, Wrong 11 coming up. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see that punch? You can't do what you do. But listen up, listen up now. Keep him there. Keep popping. Double jab, son. This guy ready to go. Double jab. Where's your hand? You're hurt. There's a jab by Harris on the outside, scores early, and then Mbai comes back on him, and the heads came together briefly. Harris would like to be outside doing just that, the jab. Well, we'll see if he can uh, get any sense of urgency. There doesn't seem to be that poaching from the corner of any urgency at all. They're very much under control there. I'm kind of surprised in a way. They probably believe that their guy's doing exactly what he wants. So if we could be in for a surprise one way or another, when the scores are announced, they're not telling him, hey, you're not doing enough. They're saying this guy's ready to go. You know, another thing, Dave, that I've noticed in recent fights we've done together, sometimes you and I, because of the amount of fights that we do on a regular basis, we pick up a fight changing before the judges do. Sometimes we see things a full two rounds ahead, and, and consequently we might have this fight closer than the judges may have it. I mean, right now I've got him by and front in this fight, but it's anybody's fight. I mean, we're just trying to give an indication of uh, let me suffice to say, it's a close fight. Yeah, and Bai has managed to come back on the inside, which has been good for him, but it's hard to win on the inside as a counterpuncher because you have to, in the eyes of the judges, make the other guy look bad. You have to make him look off balance consistently. There's some good work on the inside by and by. Quick four or five punch combination. In the other hand, uh, Harris has tried to load up shots here, but look how staggering he looks on his feet. He doesn't look like he's in as great a condition as in Mbai, and it may be the difference in the fight. I mean, I know he's in terrific condition. I know how hard he trained for this fight, and, you know, there might be a little bit of frustration. Do you see that elbow again trying to set it up, tries to crack him with the right hand, but Mbai is cute the way he moves his head, bends over the waist, load up a right hand again, does Vivian Harris, but uh, Mbai is not fully there. But uh, Harris is having a better round, 11 than he had for the past uh, uh, four or five rounds. Anyway, going back to the fifth round, uh, but he's doing it with loading up shots and fighting on the outside. Harris feels very busy with his hands. Touches them up wild with the right hand again. The count is again by and by, David. Every time Harris does something good, look at Harris comes right back. Nice exchange there, the right hand, then the uppercut inside, followed up by right hand by Mbai. Mbai has succeeded at points in making Harris uncomfortable. And because he scored with the right hand, he took Harris out of the outside jabbing style, which would guarantee the round for Vivian Harris. But Mbai took that away and made him fight on the inside where he wants to. Mbai is cute too. You see the way he grabs that forearm on the inside, tries to get him off balance and then swing back with his right hand. Watch him grab the inside. He's, he's cute. And he does it on the far side to Kenny Bayless. Loads up a right hand of his own. The heads came together again as he paws at the left eye. This is Harris's territory where he can land that right hand. And by better not let the, himself get lulled to sleep by the movements in there and pawing at that hand. Now he makes a slick move. Harris comes back and tries to counter it. Nice slick movements a couple of times trying to sneak around that left shoulder. But Harris is too experienced to let him do what he wants to do. He's trying to spin and push his elbow forward and crack him with the right hand. But Harris has too much experience and it hasn't happened. Harris cut him with a good left hook that time and got the attention, but right back is him by him. By is some kind of top two. Yeah, this has been Harris's best round, perhaps, though, in the last four or so. It's interesting how he comes on down the stretch and how this may affect the card. This is a terrific round of boxing, too. Uh, very close round, but I agree with this. Harris uh, might have got the edge in that round. And with that being the case, if the judges have it the way we have it, the fight is dead even going to the 12th and final round for the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Now, as you play along wherever you're scoring the fight, how many, did you get the close rounds all one way or did you split them? That's a, when you're scoring wherever you are, if you have three or four close rounds, theoretically, you'd like to see them two and two. 
Now on my scorecard, I only scored uh, the first and uh, first and fourth round even. So I mean, if the judges both go one way and one judge goes the other way, this thing is dead even. So I just fun. say. Look at Harris though here now, David. Good round for him. He, he was on the outside. He found some room, and when he gets room, he gets on the outside. Good hook there by Vivian Harris. Right hand coming in. Good jab, and this is the blueprint for Vivian Harris. Even though he took one, the uppercut, he needs the jab to be active in the face of Mbai. Here we go, the 12th round for the World Championship in the 140-pound division of the World Boxing Association. Bob Sheridan, Dave Bontempo, Vivian Harris in white. Solomon Mbai from France outside of Paris. And here goes Harris trying to pick up the pace. There is a sense of urgency now for Harris, I believe. He had a nice uh, 11th round that uh, we've got this thing still dead even. So who wants it the most? Who's in the best shape? That's what this 12th round is all about. Both guys want it so bad. The world championship at stake. Can Mbai lift this title from Vivian Harris? That's what it's all about. Up on his toes, he bounces in front, looking to drop a big, powerful right hand that can change the course of this fight and make it definitive. Sneaky with the right hand, gets through. Harris back on his heels again. Now he waits and waits and waits. Now he slides. He really, the hand speed is showing of him by Dave. Uh, if anything would steal the judge's uh, eye and capture the attention of the judges, the hand speed of him by and his, uh, just the manner in which he's landed that shot there. Beautiful combination of punches. Ducks underneath the right hand. The shoe shine uh, punches inside again by Mbai. Mbai's out boxing him right now. Doing well on the inside. Then he scored up top with the right hand. A good right hand again by Mbai. As he found some room to spin and then go off to the right side. He's trying a lot more things here and has appeared much fresher in the final round. Well, his Hurtado, uh, rather, uh, Harris trying to work downstairs, the guy that defeated Hurtado, a crashing right hand lands with the left tempo ball of Vivian Harris, but not a heavy one. Again, Harris tries to hold him off as Mbai comes forward, Mbai with that uh, left hook that uh, sails past the end that time of Harris. Harris standing flat-footed. He seems like he's gassed a little bit to me, and uh, Mbai seems like he's got plenty of wind left because Harris is on the outside and should have taken some opportunities to punch, and he waited. The pace of the fight getting to him as Mbai has been right on him here. There's a good attempt by Harris on the right hand. They open up. Oh, he landed a nice right hand, and he landed one right before that, Dave. Came back with a pretty good left hook, and that's the most solid punch that Mbai has been hit with since back in the second round when he hit the canvas uh, off a uh, kind of a sneaky shot that we thought was a right hand, but uh, was set up uh, with a pretty good left that actually dropped him. And now uh, the shoe shine punches again that don't have a lot of effect, but again, had that crowd-pleasing uh, uh, atmosphere created when he throws them. But Harris uh, uh, makes this a difficult round with 35, 33 seconds to go now. Just 30 seconds to go in this fight, and a very, very close fight. Harris loads up the left hook and then hangs on. And How you scoring this round so far? It, it was in by early, and it's been Harris late. Exactly. So this thing, this round is dead even. We had a dead even coming to this. It was 15 seconds ago. Does anyone want it bad enough to finish it definitively at the end? Inside of 10 seconds to go, and a tremendous fight. And Harris said, oh, look at that. Uh, Kenny Bittis, nice job as a referee preventing anything strange from ending this fight. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, a dead even 10th round. This thing could be a draw. Or it oh. could go one or two points one way or the other. I this thing... I, I wouldn't be disappointed no matter who won this fight. Now, Harris may sneak out of here with his title somehow. I mean, even with a draw, he would keep it. Uh, he had the big early lead. How much of it did Mbai take away? At what point did the judges acknowledge that he started to take it away? That's and, a key factor right yeah, there. Yeah. At what point did they... If they didn't acknowledge it until a round later, then Harris is going to win uh, by uh, probably a point or two. If they uh, picked it up when we did uh, at, at the sixth round, and then we gave him by six, seven, eight, nine, and ten before Harris came back to take the 11th round, which was a key round yeah. for him to win that round. Really does. I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he walks out of here and, and Harris keeps his title as he's at... Side, the good right hand coming together, the left hook. Remember, and by it started swiftly in this round, but that's the kind of a shot and a combination late in a round that can make the judges turn it around and give it to you. Okay, I see Jimmy Lennon is set, so we'll get the decision right now. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Patricia Jarman Manning scores about 117 to 110. Judges Dave Moretti and Paul Thomas both scores about 116 to 111. All three in favor of the winner. And still champion, uh, Vicious Vivian Hay.
nervous. Well, you hear the reaction of the crowd. The judges had it one way, the fight. Uh, obviously, they didn't see the fight the way we saw it at all. All three judges in agreement. They had the, the, the fight uh, by as much as uh, five, and uh, Patricia John and Manning had, uh, uh, had it uh, all in favor of uh, Vivian Harris. I didn't see the fight that way at all, Dave, and I would beg to differ with the judges on that one. But nonetheless, Vivian Harris has retained the championship of the world, and that's the important thing. And it was unanimous one on the judges' scorecard. And I don't mind the fact that uh, he won the fight because it was that close. I think he won it legit. However, even if by a couple, he won it. All right, that's the story. Vivian Harris retains the WBA Super Lightweight Championship of the World.